this is basically a, a retrospective, really, of what I've kind of um, been doing uh, in my career and how a few kind of uh, formative moments in that uh, in that career path have helped uh, influence my development and also influence how the Unprofessionals Network itself uh, has come about. I was going to start with a bit of audience participation. So uh, with so few of you here, uh, that means I'm going to start picking out people, maybe. But just out of interest, how many of you growing up wanted to become an engineer? Hands up. <laughs> so out of the room, let's say, if I pick on you, Andrew, to begin with, what did you want to be when you were growing up? A doctor, okay. Any other doctors in the room? Any other wannabe doctors? No? Uh, yourself at the back there? What did you want to be when you were growing up? Yeah. Football player, Football player right? <laughs> Train driver, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Any, any others? <laughs> what about yourselves over here? What did you want to be? Fiber, yeah. Police one, okay. So, it's a bit striking that nobody really in this room grew up wanting to become a transportation person or an engineering person. You all grew up coming into these other um, careers, thinking that you're going to develop into these other sectors, and something happened along the way uh, which brought you into this industry. From personal experience, um, the signs were kind of a bit ominous from the beginning, really. Uh, one of my first career aspirations was to be a bus driver. Um, I remember sitting up on the top deck and looking down the little viewport that they had uh, and looking down at all the controls and the big wheel and everything and being absolutely fascinated by that and wanting that to be my full-time job. Um, I was really keen on playing with um, little toy cars. I was really keen on getting the play mat out and driving cars around the place. Um, my mum used to give me old maps and I'd draw bypasses on them. So really, the signs were all there. The signs were all there right from a very early age that maybe this guy could turn out to be a transport planner one day. <laughs> now, I never had anyone telling me that this was a career option for me. I never had anyone along the way saying, wow, you know, this is a really good option for you. Transport planning is the way to go. I went to university without a clue of what I wanted to do. I did geography because I like maps. I finished my geography degree, didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. I worked at Tesco stacking cheese for six months because I didn't really know what to do with myself. The two things I wanted out of my career, first of all, were to base myself up in the northeast of England. So I went to university up in the northeast, loved the Geordies, loved Newcastle United, uh, loved the cheap beer. Great. I wanted to be up there. I wanted to stay up there. And the second thing I wanted out of my career uh, was to get involved with maps, just, just anything really. Um, and I went to a few job interviews. I applied to uh, a housing organisation. Uh, I applied to the Forestry Commission, you know, not really knowing exactly what, uh, what I was going for. And then I applied for this other position, Graduate <coughs> Transport Planner in Newcastle, England. And I thought, well, you know, what's this one going to be like? Uh, and the first thing I saw when I entered the office uh, was a big map, big Ordnance Survey map laid out on the table. And someone had drawn a great big line on it where this bypass was going to go. And I was like, that looks familiar. Well, I could be into this. He also gave me a cup of tea as well, and none of the others did. So I was onto a winner for sure. Now, I don't think my experience is that atypical. I think a lot of us in this room here today fell out of university, fell into the industry somehow, and you know, a few years later, here we are still. Um, but we all, you know, none of us, are, I don't, I would like to think, are bad at our jobs. None of us struggle in our jobs. Hopefully, we're all good at our jobs, and therefore, we have a, a, a skill set that matches our aspirations. So one of the things that really gets me is, why aren't we making more of the industry? Why aren't we getting out there and telling people, you can be a transport planner, you can be an engineer? Uh, because something, something's missing there in, in, in making that connection. So for me, my transport planning career probably isn't that out of the ordinary. Uh, you know, I started working on schemes. Some of those schemes got built, some of them didn't. Um, I started managing small projects, I started managing larger projects, and here I am, 12 years later, managing even larger projects and managing teams uh, and people along the way. I suppose the thing that stuck out for me in my career was more the extracurricular kind of stuff. Um, and coming into the industry age 21, um, the first professional event I went to, I can't remember if it was CIHT or not, um, but I turned up thinking, oh, you know, this would be a nice sort of networking opportunity. There must be other people my sort of age coming into the industry. And, you know, I can compare notes to them. I can see what their experiences are like. 
Um, so I went into the room and I was the youngest person there by quite some distance. Um, and we're not just talking about 10 years, we're talking a 15, 20 year age gap plus. Um, so I felt pretty out of place. Um, and you looked ahead at the program events that was going on and it was basically a bunch of old men talking about bridges uh, or piling or something like that. There was nothing in there that was really interesting for me or my own professional development. And there was nothing there for me as a young professional to meet other people that were my sort of age. So I thought, well, you know, is, is this it? Is there anything that can be done about it? And this is where really, I suppose, my CIHT career really started. Uh, and I always refer to my sort of role in CIHT as almost uh, a parallel career in some ways. You know, I've done my transport planning thing. I could talk about that if I wanted to, but what's made my industry and my career different has been my involvement in CIHT. So one of the first things I did uh, within CIHT was I tried to set up uh, a young professionals group uh, within the northeast of England. Uh, I was lucky to work with a few other young people in my office, and we were lucky to know a few people through various uh, academic links and things like that. So we are able to get a decent group of us together, and we're going, right, well, what do young people want? Well, they want some sort of uh, chartership sort of event. They want pizza, they want beer. We laid on those th three things, and surprise, surprise, it was very, very well attended. And we found ourselves tapping into this untapped resource uh, that really hadn't been touched before. And it was quite energizing to see that there was, a, there was some enthusiasm out there. It's just that no one had really reached out and dipped into it at that stage. So I've moved across the country a little bit. Uh, so I spent some time up in the Northeast. Uh, I also spent some time down in Manchester as well. And when I came down to Manchester, it was a similar kind of situation. Uh, the Young Professionals Group had been established, uh, but there wasn't a presence at all in Manchester. It was all very Liverpool-centric. So we did the same thing. And once again, uh, surprise, surprise, there was a big enthusiasm uh, for getting young professionals involved in the industry. Um, so that's really been what I've been kind of been doing uh, for the past sort of 10 or so years is kind of going around the country, not voluntarily, going around the country and setting up all these groups uh, to try and uh, engage people um, in, the, uh, in the transport industry uh, and in the work of CIHT. Um, sooner or later, this um, attracted the attention of people down in Britannia Walk and I started finding myself coming to more national level meetings. Now, bearing in mind I was just about turning 30 at this point, I thought, well, you know, am I really qualified to take part in national debates? Am I really qualified to get involved in things that have a UK-wide um, impact? And the thing with that is I found myself kind of pushing at a bit of an open door. Uh, I found myself being, again, one of the only people under the age of 40 being sat in a room. And, uh, you know, I was finding myself in situations where you know, people were turning to me and looking at me as the sole representative of the young professionals world and saying, well, what do young professionals think of this? And they're like, well, hang on, you know, there's a lot of us out there and not all of us are transport planners and not all of us are, um, you know, map geeks or geographers the same as I am. Um, so I felt a little bit, you know, under pressure to sort of speak for the whole uh, industry of young professionals. Um, so again, my passion really is to try and get more and more of us involved in the work that CIHC does at a national level um, so that we do represent our diverse range of sectors and our diverse range of opinions as well. And that's how really the Young Professionals Network uh, came about, the National Young Professionals Network. Um, we know that there's a lot of good work that's done uh, at a regional level by lots of young professionals groups spread across the country, uh, but the network is really about energising uh, that at a national level and making sure that we get involved in nationally significant debates uh, and nationally significant issues uh, that affect younger people. And when you're asked to set up a, a national network right from scratch, what do you, where do you start? You know, we had a blank slate to begin with. Um, so as I said at the start, you know, I basically used a lot of those formative experiences that I had coming into my career uh, to basically try and set out what the Young Professionals Network should do. So first of all, it's about engagement. It's about getting young professionals interested uh, in transportation in the first place. And we're not just talking about people in their 20s and 30s, we're talking about kids at school. You know, younger professionals are the best tool we have to reach out to people in schools because we're the most relatable people. You know, it's all very well someone that's had 50, 60 years on the clock coming into schools and waxing lyrical about their illustrious career. But to have someone who's Josh and Charlie's age coming in there, who's only a few years ahead, that's so much more relatable and that's so much more powerful when you're speaking to kids at school age and trying to get them into the industry. 
The second element that Young Professionals Network involve, is involved in is uh, enabling young professionals to broaden their skill sets. So I found in my CIHT career that it enables you to get hold of skills that you wouldn't necessarily get for another five or six years if you were just following a traditional professional path. So getting involved in a young professionals group means that you organize seminars, uh, you organize little projects, and you find yourself doing little project management jobs and little presentation jobs, things that you might not necessarily get exposed to within your day-to-day -day work um, you know, and as part of your everyday career. So already starting out in your career, you're already getting these important skills on board, whether it's presentation, whether it's organization, whether it's leadership, and that all adds to your CV and that all adds to your case for pushing yourselves forward uh, in your day-to-day -day career. The third element that the Young Professionals Network is involved in uh, is empowerment. And really that's going back to what I was saying earlier about pushing on that open door uh, and giving young professionals a voice in the industry. You know, a lot of people here, uh, you know, we're the millennial generation. We've grown up with technology. We've had computers in our lives the whole time we've been alive. Um, and it is surprising when you speak to more senior people how little they understand of that world. Uh, you know, I'm 33 and I don't have Instagram and I already feel ancient, but you know, there's a wider community out there that increasingly turns to us to provide an explanation for what's going to happen in the future. And we need more people like that on board uh, so that all the interests of our generation uh, are represented. So in terms of advice I'd offer, and uh, you know, I'd offer it both ways really to more senior and to more junior people, um, is to recognize that young people have a lot to offer. Um, as a young person coming into the industry, you might think, oh, I'm too junior, you know, my, my opinion doesn't count for anything, I don't think I can do much. Um, and we really should challenge that. As young people, we should be saying, no, I do have something to add to the industry, I can contribute something positive to it. And as senior people and as managers, we also have a role to play in uh, amplifying those people and making sure that their voices are heard. The second element I'd advise, um, again, both sides of the industry, is uh, that young professionals' opinion matters because we're going to be the people that are going to be using transport systems in the future. We're the people that are going to be designing transport systems in the future. So anything that we have to say maybe it's worth listening to. So again, it's about providing that forum to listen to young professionals, as well as giving young professionals the confidence to express that opinion and not to make them think that uh, their opinion is not worth anything. The third thing to recognize is that young professionals, as I've said before, are one of the most powerful tools that we've got available to diversify the industry. So I've come into the industry, and like I said, the first event I went to was male-dominated, 40s, 50s plus, not very diverse at all. It's changing, but it needs to change a lot more. And with young professionals coming into the industry, we are representing a greater range of interests. We are representing a greater range of disciplines. And that means that we don't get constrained so much by the, the typical kind of STEM uh, constraints that people sometimes experience. You know, we can bring in people from all kinds of corners of the industry. So really, we're there to sort of say to people, look, this is for you. This is for you as well. So what I'm hoping is that through Young Professionals Network and through the work of CRHT, um, you know, we can really mobilize our, our young professionals in the industry so that three, four, five years time, I can sit in a room and I can talk to people and they can say, put their hand up and say, yes, I grew up to be a transport, I want to grow up and be a transport engineer. I want to grow up to be a transport planner. <laughs>